Jamal Williams, let's go. <laughs> All right. So some interesting questions coming up here with, with Jamal Williams as far as, you know, the future in Green Bay and moving forward and, and some right now questions, really. Um, so he had a great game against Tampa Bay, which, you know, is not the uh, most formidable defense available. Um, but so he, they go on the road at Cleveland, at Carolina, Minnesota. Um, so not tough, tough sled. Yeah, there. not not easy matchups for him for the um, running game anyway. And then you get uh, Aaron Jones kind of being a little more healthy. You saw him take that touchdown run in after giving Jamal Williams a much needed and deserved breather. Yeah, for just beasting them boys all the way down the field in overtime. Well. Jamal Williams beast some dudes the whole entire game. That was Aaron Jones' first carry. Right, yeah. Was yeah I know. He was one carry. of one for 30 yards and a touchdown. Like, I'll do one. So I guess my first question is, are you firing him up at Cleveland in this next game? I mean... Because it's week 14, baby. It's crunch time. It is. So you've, this had, is... you've had a couple of games where you know he was getting the lion's share of the carries, 2018, 21, and 21 attempts in the last four games. Some of those games were you know, 67, 57... 86 and bad then you yards had, per carry and you had the buck 13 and, and some receptions this week but he's also facing you know stack boxes because no they want hunley to beat you nobody's scared of hunley throwing the ball against him we both really like jamal williams uh we both like his running style we we those yards per carry that you alluded to there uh weren't a good representation of kind of what I thought was actually going on in the game, um, right? I know you feel the same way. And you you rattle off the, the the string of you know bad yards per carry, but those were against solid run defenses. Like it was Chicago, Baltimore, Pittsburgh. Like those are right. tough defenses. This two year of them to play. on the road, and they were tough defenses. Not necessarily an excuse, um, but again, I, I didn't think that what you were seeing there was and, and the the relatively low outcome of yards in the game i thought he was running much better than what the box score at the end of the game is telling absolutely um, yeah we, I, I know we, we talked we about this, this yeah. last time we were on the mics we went in kind of hard on jamal just to like defend all the hate out there like we're, we're beating down all the hate out that there. that he's just a compiler yeah and just because he's getting volume he's not any good right and the, but he he had all this volume but he didn't do well with most of it like what right. are y'all watching because the sound of the pads and like this dude and, and especially against the bucks like he he was crushing it out there. Like he's been playing well for weeks. Um, I just hate he, that. I hate that yards per carry argument. It's uh, people just just go straight to that. Well, right. I had a bad yards per carry. So right. and it's like, come on. Like a good yards per carry is definitely like a pro to throw at someone about a player. But like rarely do I ever throw a bad yards per carry as like a negative argument. Right. And I mean, it's just you're facing a, a quarterback that nobody's really scared of. Right. Um, like and then they can't he can't deliver to anybody but Devonte adams pretty much <laughs> right and it's you know you got the same kind of thing just to compare like leonard fournette's going through a similar thing where you're not nobody's scared of bortles so they're stacking the box against fournette he's getting a bunch of attempts he's running very physical very tough um and and, and just not at the end of the day not you know the box score doesn't right. emulate or doesn't uh represent pay, represent what what actually took place and I think the same things happening with Jamal Williams I think you saw it in this game again the Bucks run defense isn't great but he's got plenty of power he can catch the ball he's got shimmy he's got all the moves right? man the jump cuts and spin move a mean stiff arm there's no chance you're tackling him at first contact uh he's he'll give hardly, you a little hesitation move yeah he hardly he just he will literally drag three guys right literally dragging piles of men with him for right. more yards. Like that touchdown that he had on third down, he was like stuck, literally right. stuck at the three yard line. And he just, that shoulder was already lowered. L Cause that's how turning. he comes into yeah. work with that shoulder lowered. And he just forced his way. He yeah. would not be denied into the end zone. No. And, and you know, I know we touched on this a couple of weeks ago, but almost never, if he does get contacted in the backfield, he usually gets back to the line of scrimmage, falls forward, gets you at least a little bit of something. And in my opinion, that counts for a whole lot. Sure. Like, you know, he's, he just seems so concise with his movements and right. like it, decisive might be the better word urgent. Like it just, it looked, it just looked like there was no wasted movement. Every decision he made was quick and decisive and he's always falling forward. Right. He's getting more yards. And then the passing game. I mean, he's just, 
He's good in the passing game. Like, he's got soft hands, and he makes good people miss in the open field. What more do you want from a guy? I don't. He really... gets every yard block plus some. I just I love I love his competence passing game. I love everything about him. It's just a joy to watch. So, after a, a slight love fest here <laughs> at Cleveland this week, week fourteen, life is on the line here. Money's on the line here. Yeah. Jamal Williams, yes or no? Yes. RB two. Sure. You flexing him? You haven't flexed with him? Or would, I, you, would you rather flex a receiver? Man, if Aaron Jones didn't take one carry for 20 <laughs> yards and a touchdown, you know, I mean, he looked awesome on that yeah. carry. And Aaron Jones is, has showed very well prior in prior games this season. He was we – were, people were about ready to crown him, and then he got hurt. I think it's a good good, uh, good backfield here kind of moving forward. It's a great backfield. These Packers know what the hell they're doing. They this is, they draft and, and stash and, and keep their guys in-house. Yeah. That's kind of what they do. That's their MO. But Ty Montgomery's on IR. Right. So I don't see any reason why you couldn't fire him up as an RB2. And if you had to flex him, I, yeah, flex I'm him. I'm with you. I, I could I could be okay with the RB2 if you don't have a better. Like, let's say, would you rather play Duke Johnson or Jamal Williams? Hmm. Yeah, I guess just this quarterback of the Browns is just scares me. And now they got Josh Gordon there who they're just making sure that he gets yeah. all the action he can. And, and, and Duke Duke didn't have a great game. So the recency bias, but I mean, he looked okay and a couple made a couple great plays. He's been really him, solid all season. He He's has. been a high end RB two uh, pretty much all season long. I think I probably have to go Jamal. Yeah. I can roll Jamal with you. Uh, how about we take a look forward to Rogers as I and possibly a Carolina uh, return Week to the 15. field here. Uh, so you're probably not going to see these 20, 18, 21, 21 kind of numbers, plus maybe a little Aaron Jones factors in there. Um, but it's going to get easier to run the ball with Aaron Rodgers uh, back in the fold here. Absolutely. It'll be interesting to see how Aaron Jones or Jamal Williams, maybe a little bit mix of both once he's back out there, if he's back out there, kind of probably if they stay relevant in the hunt here. Um, yeah, so they're two games out of the wild card at six and six right now in the NFC. Rodgers can't; he's not going to. I don't think he's eligible till week fifteen, right? So yeah, so still, he, could, he could possibly play the last three games, right? So I guess if they win next week, I guess probably regardless of what they do, they're only going to be three games out at worst. I guess next week if they lose, so then they probably bring Aaron back. Right. I would like him to see maybe just shut him down, let him <laughs> let him just heal that shoulder up but he's already throwing and they're already pretty yeah. pumped about it so i i mean both of these dudes can catch the ball right uh he doesn't really like to dump it down too much but that does kind of increase their floor a little bit and i don't see why an aaron Rodgers led offense can't support two backs especially with ty montgomery out so i mean i don't know what i guess you were trying to maybe get to an alluding like how do you feel about jamal with aaron back yeah well because you, you're not the volume is definitely going down and yeah. now you don't. I don't really love two backs with Aaron Rodgers. It's hard enough to get one back to really produce yeah. on a weekly basis. Um, but maybe like, he's got this shoulder injury. Maybe in this maybe, running game has been successful. Maybe and and you can get some guys out of the box. But you know it's Aaron Rodgers. That's probably not going to happen. You alluded to that third down carry that Jamal Williams scored on. Like they gave it to him three times down on the goal line. Probably not happening with Aaron Rodgers in there, but it might be easier on first down to run the ball with Jamal Williams and catch you a little bit off guard. So it's, you know, a little bit of weighing things here. And and really, I guess it could be Aaron Jones at the end of the day. Maybe Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones kind of hit it off. They're both first and roll call. I don't know. <laughs> He's stupid. <laughs> but I, I guess I just maybe looking forward to that and then looking forward to next season. Uh, I don't know. How do you feel about Jamal Williams? Is he somebody maybe... You're trying to maybe get rid of now, or you you want to roll mm-hmm. with him, or I don't want to get rid of him. If I if I have him, um, that's a strong hold because he looks great. You're a strong holder, though. I am a strong. Nobody holder. gets out of those sweaty little <laughs> dick beaters of yours. <laughs> that wasn't very nice. <laughs> I do. I'm a loyal guy. I like to hold on. Why would I let go of a dude that looks freaking good? That doesn't yeah, make any no, sense to me. That's, a, that's perfectly because the, fine. Because the backfield's money? Well, none of these dudes have stayed healthy. So it, it, there's they, all three of these dudes yeah. have been startable at certain points this year. And Absolutely. you know you want to play them because they're now the man right. currently. And I like all of them more better than, than Eddie Lacy or Starks or whatever running back they've had in the past several years. Uh, I like... I, like all these dudes look great to me. I want yeah. a piece of any of them because 
this is dynasty. Like we're talking dynasty fantasy football, and just because it's a crowded backfield doesn't mean I don't want the dude with talent and the dude that's shown yeah. that he can be very successful on a field even without Aaron sure. Rodgers. And I, I understand the volume and I understand the muddiness. But well, like, there's that's something just to be said for somebody that you may have drafted in the you know third fourth round and and turning a profit for him when you can. Yeah, because we've everyone's had guys on their teams that have looked you know good looked and good and the value's been up and you held because you were like oh yeah yeah and then you know it evaporates but it goes both ways mm-hmm. you know you you get it's rid like of a you. guy you, yeah. sometimes <laughs> you get rid of guys and and you know they're uh, uh all pro I see what you're day, saying so. I hear what you're saying man um. I just, if I see a dude like this, and I've liked, I we've liked him since April. We've liked him since we looked into yeah. these rookie rookie class. And I I liked Jamal Williams over Aaron Jones, you know, kind of going forward. Yep. And then you saw some Aaron Jones, and I I'm not gonna lie, I really liked what I saw from him. He's a good pass catcher, and he looked good running between the tackles. And I think Jamal Williams looks really good too. Uh, again, this will probably. Uh, in in my humble opinion, bring bring the end to Ty Montgomery being a, a quote unquote featured back. Um, I think these two guys can handle that role. I think you can use Ty Montgomery creatively and still use him as a running back here and there, and use him as a receiver, something that they could possibly need moving into next year. So we um, have this bet <laughs> whether or not Ty Montgomery is going to be a running back at the end of the, like basically the start of next season. Right. And I will admit. That him going on IR at this point in time is a slight shift in momentum towards your side of the bet, <laughs> but I will. St- I'm going to stand strong and say that the sample size is big enough that Ty Montgomery is going to still be a running back. But maybe you're right. Maybe he's not the feature back. But I think he's probably the best receiver out of these dudes, which is saying something because they're all good receivers. He could. He could have really helped sway this decision if he would have just changed his number to like 38 yeah. instead of 88. He kept it at 88. Once he, once he stayed at 88, I was like, oh, this guy's, he's, well, he's flip-flop. But if you could play running back at a number that's not <laughs> not supposed to have, wouldn't that be like some incentive just to be like getting away with something? I guess like, so. Look at this. I just kind of shimmied my way into a wrong number. I guess so. So I, I, <laughs> the, the, the conundrum for me is the Aaron Rodgers and which back is going to be the guy who gets – you know, the most play out of this. It could definitely be a headache and you definitely could be like, I can't play any of these guys because I don't know which one it's going to be. It could be a Patriots type situation. My reason for not liking Ty Montgomery as much as everybody else. And it was never the talent factor. It was the, the, the way that the Packers use running backs and the way that Aaron Rodgers decides to use his running back. And even when he is open in the check down, a lot of the times doesn't go with that option. Yeah. Um, Especially inside the 40. And that's what, right. Inside going in to score in their 40. Yep. Um, And, and, you know, that's what kind of kept he, Ty Montgomery got a couple of like one yard touchdown runs and, and the, the check downs are what kept him, you know, looking good for, the he portion of the season where he was out it. there, um, so I, I, I'm just kind of unsure how the Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones things will shake out. I think I like, I've really been liking what I've seen from Jamal Williams as we've just said 65 times. Yeah, um, look at he clack. Get some Jamal Williams. Hold yeah. him. Trade for him. Don't what, trade what, him. What I would won't. you give up? Would you give up a second for Jamal Williams? Given that I would have drafted him with a second, I. I I'd probably give up a second to get Jamal Williams. All right, fair enough. What about I you? I can't argue with that. I don't know. Like I, a late I, second? Yeah, I guess by now you kind of your your second is kind of settled in. I, I I really like what I've seen from him. I think a late second would 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 probably get it done for somebody. Somebody's would, listening to the noise and not really watching the game. Yeah. And I think a late I'd go I start with a third. <laughs> would uh what about Aaron Jones? Would you would you be trying to acquire him? I think for the same, same thing. I think same thing. Yeah, samesies. Yeah. Uh, I'm down for getting one or the other and rolling the dice. Or both. Or two out of three. If you could get two out of three, but I'm not interested. Wouldn't be bad. uh, That's what Meatloaf says. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, let's get out of here. We've talked about this at nauseam at this point. Yeah.